Hi, this is David. We just received our new emulator for the BA2 Plus calculator by Texas Instruments. I'm excited because this is one of the more popular calculators used by financial professionals for the exams like CFA and FRM. So I thought I'd start by showing how we use this calculator to answer one of the more common questions, and that is, what is the price of a bond? And so here is a typical kind of problem expressed as a word problem. What is the price of a 10-year, $1,000 face value bond with a coupon rate of 4% that pays semi-annually if the yield is 6%? Now, just as a cheat, I've used Excel here just to confirm that we're going to get the same answer that we get with the calculator. We always should get the same answer. Now, here I'll give you the number one hurdle that I see with new learners, and that refers to compound frequency, or with the technical term there is periodicity. And that is to say, whenever we're using cash flows like this, in this case we're discounting a series of cash flows to the present value, we need to assume a compound or discount frequency. Now the question here is, gives us a pretty obvious hint here that we want a semi-annual discounting frequency. Which that is to say, two periods per year. Now the reason this is confusing is that a good question will always give you the assumptions or inputs in annual terms or specifically as per annums. And so this coupon rate of 4% is a bond paying 4% per annum. And the yield here, which is really the yield to maturity, is 6% per annum. And a good question, a good author like John Hull will actually insert the per annum in there. I have not inserted it because sometimes questions don't even, don't give you that explicit piece of information. But we want to assume here the 4% is per annum and the yield or yield to maturity is 6% per annum. And if you think about it, if the question mixed and matched different periods have deviated from the annual convention, then it could get really, really confusing. Okay, but those are the per annums. That's different than what is the compound frequency we're using to discount these cash flows. And now, although the coupon rate is 4% per annum, that means the annual coupon is $40 per year. It's paying those coupons every six months or $20 every six months or $20 twice per year. So that six months is the period or twice per year is the periodicity that we want to use to discount the cash flows. If you keep that thing in mind, I found that in most cases you'll be fine. So let's use the calculator here. The thing I like about this calculator is that it puts the five variables in one row conveniently. And so we can look at all these questions in terms of the following way. We want to give the calculator the four that we know. Those are the four known variables and ask for it to solve for the one unknown variable that we don't have. Now these keystrokes are labeled in generic time value of money as, as generic, generic time value of money keys or variables. And that's fine because we're using a bond here, but that's just the asset class. It's really just a time value of money key uh, uh, exercise. And so we're going to be solving for the price of a bond, which is just the same thing as the present value of the series of cash flows. Now, technically, it's the model-based price as opposed to the market-based price. We don't necessarily expect the bonds, the bond to trade at this price. This is the price is determined by our discounted cash flow model. So we're typically going to either solve for the price or present value of the bond or the yield, which is equivalent or maps, maps to this key here, the interest rate. But in this problem, we're already given the yield. So it's one of the four that we're given, and we're just solving for the price or present value. And so I literally like to work my way across the five variables just to make sure I get them all. And so I'll do that here. We start with N or the number of years, and we notice in the question that's 10. But then we want to stop and say, wait, are we doing annual periods or semi-annual periods? We're doing semi-annual periods. So we need to multiply this by 2 because there are 26-month periods in that 10-year span. And then I put that, I give that the input of N. Now we've committed to that 6-month periodicity. So we need to be consistent with that. Next is the interest rate or the yield, which is 6 
However, again, we're referring here to the twice per year compound frequency or discounted basis. And so we're going to divide that by two. 6% per year is 3% every six months, also called the bond equivalent basis. Okay, what's next? The present value price of the bond. Well, I'm not giving that information. That's the one I'm solving for, so I skip it. Payment is the generic term for the cash coupon that's received each period. We have a $1,000 face value bond. It has a coupon rate of 4%, but we need to divide that by two, and that gets us $20 every six months. So again, that 4% coupon rate is $40 annually, but $20 paid every six months. That's the payment. Finally, the future value is the same thing as the par or face value of the bond. And notice conveniently that the generic F value is also has the same abbreviation as the bond specific face value. And so it's 1000 and I input the F value. Now notice I've given it one, two, three, four. The calculator only now needs to solve for the one equation and the one unknown for of price. So I compute the present value of that cash flow stream or the price of the bond, or really the model-based price of the bond, is $851.23. It's a negative because the cash flows are moving in different directions. We would have to, this would have to be a cash outflow if we paid for this in order to receive the stream of coupons and the final par as inflows, and those would be positives. So that's fine. Now, what if, finally, just really quick, what if we decided to answer this question with an, in annual periods? In other words, what if the coupon rate was 4% and it pays annually? Can we do that? Of course we can do that. We simply now are dealing with annual discounting. And so I can go back and say N is 10. The interest rate is, or the yield, I'm sorry, is 6%. The payment or coupon is $40 per period or per year in this case. And that face value or future value is still the same 1,000. I've given it the same four variables, but this time I'm dealing with annual discounting of the cash flows. I compute the present value and I do get a slightly different price and that's appropriate. The price will vary based on our compound frequency. This is why it's important to establish what the compound frequency is. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. See you next time for the yield or yield to maturity. Thanks.